Ever since I started my Amazon KDP business over four and a half years ago, I've been desperately looking for a dashboard where I could manage and optimize every single part of my KDP business in one place. But despite searching high and low for such resource, I just simply wasn't able to find one. So with my four and a half years of Amazon KDP experience, I decided to make one. And the result is a single hub where you can track the performance of all of your books, manage each step of the KDP book creation process, dive deep into niche and competitor research, track all of your KDP finances, and so much more. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through a complete walkthrough and tutorial of exactly how to use this resource that's gonna optimize and streamline your KDP business. Now it's a pre-recorded video, so I won't keep you too long and let's dive straight into the tutorial. Hello and welcome to this walkthrough and tutorial of how to use the Ultimate KDP Planner. Let's jump straight into how you can use it. First of all, there should be, once this goes live, a button up here that allows you to duplicate the planner. The planner that you have access to, you actually won't be able to use. You first need to duplicate it up here and save your own copy, and then you can name it whatever you want. In terms of the actual planner contents itself, the first thing we have is KDP Foundation. So this is just a great place for you to put down your KDP goals and also have useful links of things related to KDP. So I would generally advise having um, two main KDP goals, an input goal, which would be how many books you're uploading, and then an output goal of how much kind of you want that output to be in terms of royalties. And there may be some other goals here, but I'll leave that entirely up to you what you want to do for your goals. And then, as I mentioned, you also have some really useful links for some things in KDP, the KDP Home, the Amazon Ads, Canva, which is where the vast majority of the books that I make and I teach in my coaching are made, and also some information about KDP uh, book cover dimensions. We then go down to the productivity hub, and this is just kind of how I really enjoy planning my week, planning my days, uh, and planning tasks I have in the future. So I break down all of my tasks into three buckets, either today, this week, or future. So the vast majority of your kind of to-do list and things you need to tick off will be in this box. But then when you want to go ahead and actually change something or where you're planning your week, you can move something from the future into this week, or maybe even from this week into today, so you know exactly what you have to do on a given day. All of this data um, at the moment is just completely dummy data for the purpose of this video. So don't worry too much about that. Kind of structure this however you want to. I really enjoy being able to see everything that I have to do further down the line, but also like to be able to see at what point I'm actually going to get to these. So this today, this week, and in future bucket method really helps me with my productivity. And in terms of productivity as well, I also really enjoy working in Pomodoro sessions. So there is a built-in Pomodoro timer here for you. You can set however long you want the Pomodoro to be. And for those of you that don't know what a Pomodoro technique is, you can Google it, but essentially it's just breaking your work time down into very small slots where you have 25 minutes on, five minutes off, or however long you want your Pomodoro to be. So rather than having to go and find a Pomodoro video or find your own counter, it, there's already one built into the template. So, so far these two areas have been very generic and not really too specific to KDP, but I think it's important to have that foundation of productivity before you actually go into your KDP work. The next section is the actual KDP book hub itself. And this is where we're going into KDP specific things. So the KDP book hub is designed to give you a complete visibility of your whole book creation process, how the book's performing and where kind of you're sitting in terms of your KPIs. So you can see here for every single um, book, you have the book name, the status, the profit and loss, which is dictated by the cost and the sales, which I will go on in just a second. The date in which you either plan to upload the book or you did upload it. The link to your book, or if you haven't uploaded it yet, link to similar book that you kind of want to get inspiration from. Assign to, so if you're assigning it to a freelancer or you're doing it yourself, you can choose who you're assigning this to. The book royalties for your book, so how much you have made from the book, the amount you spent on ads, the amount it cost you to make the book if you outsource it to freelancers, and these three formulas all go into this profit and loss to see how much your book has made overall. So it's really good for tracking how your book is performing. You then open into each one. You can see also a um, status. Is it gonna be live or is it kind of uh, not started yet? Is it being creative? Just so you can see where along the process each of your books are. Have you done your keyword research? Have you done your book interior? So you can see exactly what stage of the book creation process your book sits at. Maybe you've done everything, but you haven't quite made your lead magnet yet. Therefore, you can kind of see where this book is sat at. So really useful if you want to understand where your book is in terms of its production timeline. If you then go down, you also have some really important things here. So when you're building out your book listing, you can have all of this in this section here. So you put in your book title in this area here. You can put in your book title here and also your book description in this section here. It's really important to have your listing stuff ready to go because actually how you produce your KDP listing is really important to making sales on Amazon KDP. So I've just put this section in here 
So everything to do with the book is organized in one slot. And then you also have with that in mind, the keyword boxes. So seven different boxes you can put in here. You can have up to 50 characters per box in each of these. And if you're not sure how many characters you have for each of your boxes, there is also a check character numbers section here. So if you type in animal coloring, Book in here for this example, that's going to be 20 characters and you can add in another 20 or so all the way up to 50. And so you know exactly you're not going over the 50 limit, which is the limit on each keyword box. And then you can go ahead and just copy and paste all of these in and then move on to the next box and do it that way. So you can completely plan your Amazon KDP book listing all within this section here. And this, like I say, is the same for every single book. So it will all be exactly the same. And once you've made a book, you can create a new one, brand new book. And then open this up and then give it a nice icon if you wanted to have it. Say it was a basketball book, you'd have this basketball. Or if it's a photography book, you can just have this icon here. So you can add as many books to it as you want and just gives you really good visibility of where all of your books are on along the KDP process. So that is the KDP book hub. The next section we have is the KDP niche research hub. So this is all about tracking your book production, what we've just gone over there. This next section, the niche research hub, is all about your niche research. So I preach all the time. In my coaching and also my YouTube videos, how important niche research is to the whole KDP process. So I've got a whole dedicated section here for that. So I'll walk you through step by step. First of all, we have some important information about generally what I would class as good niches and things you have to remember. These are just very basic and broad guidelines. Every niche will be different, but it's just a good guideline to follow generally speaking, to get an understanding of what makes a good niche. So I'll go through all of these definitions as we make our way through here. So for the niche research section, this is all about finding profitable niches for us to publish our books in. So what you would do is you would type in the main keyword for a niche. So let's say with this dummy data, a niche we found was unicorn coloring book. So that's kind of the main keyword that we're going to be targeting within this niche. So you'd put that in here for your first niche. You then go through and assess how much competition. So you can choose how many other unicorn coloring books come up when you type in this unicorn um, coloring book keyword. Ideally, if you have less than three books here, that's kind of the sign of a good niche, but you can see how many books you've got here based on this search term. Again, this is just dummy data. If you type in unicorn coloring book onto Amazon, you will see that there are thousands of unicorn coloring books. So it's not actually a good niche to go into. But let's just say there were only four books in that niche. You would put four here. You then move on to the next section, which is the actual competition. And I'm defining actual competition as how many other books that are exactly like the one you're looking to make in that niche. But how many of these have four and a half star rating or higher? So in this example, if you had four books that are unicorn coloring books while you're doing your niche research, but two of those were rated lower than four stars in their rating, I would have ranked this actual competition as just two books because there's only two books here with decent reviews and rating. And therefore, you're going to be able to take these spots by producing a better quality book. So this is the kind of the broad competition. And this is the actual competition that you're facing. And I would generally say here, good enough competition where it's not too saturated. I would say anything three or less books for your actual competition. So that's the number you should be looking for. Again, each niche is very different, but kind of go with what you feel. You then have this box where there is good demand or not. So essentially, if you type in the main keyword, unicorn coloring book into Amazon, and there are loads of different recommendations. So maybe it might say unicorn coloring book for kids, for girls, for girls ages six to eight. If there's loads of different suggestions, that shows there is a lot of demand around a main keyword. So you would then just tick this box. So this is kind of allowing you to see with your niche research, if a niche is even worth publishing it. If this basically said five plus books and there was no good demand, you can see this is a really poor niche and you're not gonna go ahead and publish in it. So it's just a good way of organizing all of your niche research. But if you're happy with the competition and the level of demand, you would then go into the actual competitor research. Now this is a really important part of KDP. A lot of people don't really get right when they come into execution. And that is positive review research and negative review research. Because ultimately, if you're facing competition, which let's be honest, in 2024, you are predominantly going to be publishing in niches where there already is competition. You want to make sure you're producing a book that is way above the quality that is already out there. So what I recommend doing with this is for each book that you're looking at in terms of your competition, look at their reviews. And in this section, you can write down all of the things that the people who have reviewed that book liked about it, i.e., things you want to make sure you include in your unicorn coloring book. So in this example, I've just said they liked how it wasn't just unicorns, but there were also images related to unicorns. So when you're making yours, you would take this positive feedback on board and produce your book with this positive feedback in mind. And just as important is the negative reviews left on your competitors too, because this basically shows you 
what your competitors are doing wrong and what the customers who actually would want to go ahead and buy your book are actually currently missing from what's already out there. So this is really important to understand. So let's just say for the example, there were complaints about not having enough pages in these unicorn coloring books. Most of them had 50 pages, but people simply want more. If you could see lots of reviews saying similar things, that is a really obvious sign. The market is after a bigger unicorn coloring book. So that's a really good way for me of understanding how you can therefore go ahead and improve your offering, which is the next box in this table. So after you've done your positive review and your negative review research, you have this final box where you can put these two together and work out how you can improve your offering for your book. This is the ultimate goal when it comes to being successful on KDP and you're competing against other products. You want to make sure your book is an improved offering from what's on there already. So in this example, we've seen that people didn't like the fact there were only 50 pages in our competitions books. So therefore for our book, we're going to create a hundred pages to make it much bigger and much more fun to use than what's already out there. And we're also going to offer it at a cheaper price of £5.99. So not only is our book cheaper, it's also a better quality book. And that therefore means we have an improved offering. So it's really useful not just to understand about the niche, but also the competition within that niche and how that impacts the book that you create. And then based on all of these, you can give each niche an opportunity score out of 10. So if you think it's a really good niche with lots of potential, you would put a 10 or if it's a really bad niche, you probably put a three or anything below that. So just a way of seeing all of your niche research and visualizing and being in control of all of that niche research. That is a really important part of this KDP planner. So the final section of this KDP planner is going to be the KDP Business Finances Hub. Now tracking business finances on KDP is a little bit difficult because you don't really have access to all the data in one place. You have your royalties number in one area, you have your ads in another area, your freelancer input might be on Fiverr or Upwork, nothing is all in one place. So I want to make the finance tracker available for everyone who has the template to you so it's really easy to track your KDP performance. So it's a very simple spreadsheet here and the first thing you need to do is look at the instructions. So when you actually open this template, you won't be able to edit anything. So what the first thing you need to do is go to file, make a copy, and then this will allow you to edit and put in your own numbers here because you will only have access originally to the non-editable template. Secondly, you then want to only change cells that are in green. This is built off formulas and changing anything else that's in black writing will break the spreadsheet and it won't be good news for you. Only change cells that are in green and remember when you're adding new things into the spreadsheet, if it's a manual input from yourself, make sure it's in green so you can understand that yourself too. And then if you have any issues while you're using this spreadsheet, feel free to message me on Twitter and I'd be more than happy to help you out. But in terms of the actual spreadsheet itself, what this allows you to do, as I mentioned a couple of seconds ago, is it allows you to see all of your KDP income and expenses in one place because currently KDP only show you your royalties on one page, your ads on another, your, all of your outsourcing spend in another one. There's no way of seeing everything in one place, which is why I wanted to build this hub based on my experience of KDP. So for each month, you can see the royalties number, which is what you manually have to put in here. And then for the same month, you also have your fixed costs. So for this example here, in November, I had £10 coming out of my account for Canva and I had £62 coming out for Helium 10, which gave me a total fixed cost of £73.34. In that same month, I spent £600 on freelancers and £500 on ads, which gave me a total variable cost of £1,100, which is pulled into this figure here. So again, you're not inputting this manually. You're inputting only anything in green is what you want to actually put in yourself. If you want to add in an extra expense, you can just go here and insert one row below. And let's just say this was minus 300 and this was something else you would now have a 1400 pound variable cost in here which brings through your overall profit number so when you're adding in a an expense make sure you choose the bottom cell here and insert one row above that way it will keep all of the calculations there so make sure you're adding one row above one of these green cells here. So what this essentially does then is allows us to see our royalties, our fixed costs, our variable costs, and therefore our underlying profit, because it's very easy with KDP just to see our royalties number and not actually realize how the business is making money or how much it's making. So then for each month, you can do exactly the same and you're gonna be able to see your royalties and profit over time. And everything is gonna be in one place here. So when you're doing kind of some business finances, you can see how much everything's cost you and actually how much bottom line profit you've actually made from your KDP. So this is a really important spreadsheet that I wanted to just make and have accessible for everyone who has the KDP Planner 2 because beyond making book sales, it's also really important to be able to track your performance and see how everything is going.
So if you want to access this ultimate Amazon KDP planning hub, I will leave a link below down in the description. It is just a one time fee to access the hub. And it's something that I spent hours producing and also four and a half years plus of Amazon KDP experience going into exactly what this hub needs to make your Amazon KDP process as efficient and as streamlined as possible. So if you want to check this out, I will leave a link below in the description. But thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.